Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope this video finds you well. My name is Jonathan Riddell and today we are going to talk about the zero temperature or ground state properties of the XX model. This will lead us to eventually find the channel's first ever quantum phase transition. We are looking at the spin one half XX model um, on a periodic chain written in the following form. And after solving this model, we arrive at a free fermionic Hamiltonian of the following form, where we have H is equal to a sum uh, over epsilon K, which is our energy eigenmodes, and DK dagger DK are creation and annihilation operators, or fermionic creation and annihilation operators, so together they combine to be a number operator. The epsilon k's are given by the following expression. Uh, so epsilon k is equal to j cosine of k minus lambda, and lambda was the magnetic field. And in this video, we will take the convention uh, that the discrete momenta k uh, are equal to 2 pi m divided by l, uh, such that we have our k lying in the interval uh, negative pi to pi, where the right-hand side is inclusive and the left-hand side is exclusive. This is a bit different uh, than the first video, uh, but the representations of k are equivalent uh, due to the complex exponential being periodic. This definition of k is a bit more standard, and, it, and this particular interval is commonly referred to as the first Brillouin zone a concept we will definitely revisit in the future in more detail. First things first, we need to define the ground state, which is sometimes referred to as the state of the system at zero temperature. So the ground state is defined as the state with all of the negative energy eigenmodes uh, excited or turned on, uh, basically meaning having a fermion uh, in that state, uh, while simultaneously having all of the energy eigenmodes with a positive value uh, turned off or being unoccupied. So from there, it's instructive then to find the corresponding momenta k such that epsilon of k is equal to zero. This momenta is commonly referred to as the Fermi momentum. So looking at the eigenmodes, we need to look at the following cases. When the magnetic field is less than the negative of the coupling energy J, when the absolute value of lambda is less than or equal to the coupling energy J, and when lambda, the magnetic field, is greater than the coupling energy J. You can see examples of this here in the following plot, uh, where I've set the coupling energy J is equal to 1. And from this plot, you see that the energy eigenmodes that are going to contribute uh, to our ground state are always below 0. So focusing on these cases, we see that the Fermi momentum is going to be defined in the following way. So since we're dealing with a cosine curve here, uh, the Fermi momenta will come in plus or minus pairs. And we can easily see that the ground state will occupy a mode in between negative pi uh, and the negative Fermi momenta and between the Fermi momenta and pi. Everything else in between these intervals will be unoccupied and this formally uh, defines our energy ground state. So now that we know the properties or how to construct our ground state, let's track the magnetization uh, with these properties of the ground state in mind. Recall that we are mapping the spin one half Z operator to fermionic uh, number operators in the following way. This was due to the Jordan-Wigner transformation that we introduced uh, two videos ago that we also used to solve the model. So the total magnetization in the z direction can then be written in terms of the local fermionic operators with the following expression. And as we saw while we were solving the model, we can then rewrite this in terms of the momentum operators in the following way. So the total magnetization in the z direction is therefore written as the following expression in terms of the number operators that appear in our Hamiltonian. Now with this definition in mind, let's take the expectation value of the total magnetization 
uh, for the ground state of our Hamiltonian. The, the definition of our energy eigenstates are really simple. Either the eigenmode is on or it's off, or more formally, it's either occupied or it's unoccupied. So it gives us a zero or a one in its expectation value. By our definitions before, this then breaks our sum into the following sums of ones. Reorganizing this a little bit, we can then express the expectation value for the total magnetization um, as the following expression. So we see the magnetization is just two competing summations, equivalent to half the difference between the negative eigenmodes and the positive ones. If there are the same number of negative eigenmodes as there are positive ones, we would just have zero magnetization. Likewise, if all of the eigenmodes were negative or positive, that would correspond to a completely magnetized state for the ground state. To make our expression a little bit more manageable, we will also transform it into the total magnetization per site. This is just corresponds to dividing out the number of lattice sites. So now let's introduce a standard trick that you see in condensed matter physics all the time. Uh, we will approximate the sums by integrals. We can do this because the momentas k get closer uh, as we increase the system size. And in the end, uh, what we're really interested in is the thermodynamic limit. So L is going to get extremely big here. To see why this happens, you can simply write down the difference between neighboring momenta or neighboring k's. Um, and that's always uh, delta k or uh, delta of the momenta is equal to 2 pi divided by L. So as L gets big, uh, this number is going to get really small. So now we'll uh, employ our pretty standard trick uh, that we've done before on this channel. We, are we will transform our sum into an integral. Starting from the sum of a function of k, we simply insert delta k by multiplying and dividing it. This makes the sum look like a Riemann sum. And of course, we have an exact expression for what delta k or delta of the momenta is. So in our case, we can then write the expectation value of the magnetization in the z direction per site as the following expression. And this is easily evaluated. Our magnetization per site becomes one half minus the Fermi momenta divided by pi. So this tells us something really important about our magnetization once we sub in the definitions for the Fermi momenta. Firstly, two of our parameter regions aren't actually that interesting. They correspond to completely pol polarized states. The final parameter regime is definitely more interesting. We get the following expression for the magnetization. We can of course graph this out as well uh, to get some intuition for what we're looking at. So if we set uh, the coupling parameter j is equal to 1, we see that at zero field we have no magnetization, uh, which is sort of expected. If we follow lambda or the magnetic field as it grows in the positive direction, we see that it starts to sharply magnetize the state uh, near the end of the interval, so as lambda approaches the coupling constant j. An interesting thing to compute then is the magnetic susceptibility of the ground state. Of course, for two of the parameter regimes, this is trivial, it's just zero. But for the more interesting parameter regime or the inner parameter regime, we get the following interesting curve. This curve is divergent for lambda is equal to the coupling parameter j. And therefore we see that we have a second order phase transition. We haven't talked too much on this channel about critical scaling. So perhaps we can come back to this uh, when we talk more about critical exponents a bit more deeply and we'll work them out then. But for now, we've seen a model go through a second order quantum phase transition uh, as a function of the magnetic field, which is really cool. When I say quantum phase transition, what I'm really saying is that the ground state fundamentally changed its properties or it changed its phase. These phase transitions can only be accessed by varying a physical parameter, which in our case was the magnetic field lambda. But that's it for today, guys. I hope you liked the video. Uh, if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.